The transition from Australopithecus to Homo, what Tobias had in mind when he came up with the designation Homo habilis for those reins he found at Earl Divide Gorge, involves a series of morphological and even associated behavioral changes. Going from Australopithecus, like STS-5 from Sturkfontein seen here, and ER-13, an early Homo specimen from the Turkana Basin, there are a number of things that happen. Part of it is an expansion in brain size, encephalization, increased prioritization of the brain. Part of it is a change in dental size, particularly the post-canine teeth, a reduction in the size of those teeth, and a reduction overall in the size of the whole chewing apparatus. Part of it is seen in the overall morphology of the jaw then associated with those changes to chewing apparatus. Some of it comes with changes to our hands, actually. The increasing prioritization of fine precision grip associated especially with the distal segments of our fingers. Again, the ability to not just hold something with the tips of our fingers, but to hold it powerfully in order to fl knock flakes off a stone. Other changes occurred postcranially, an expansion in body size. Not all of these changes occurred immediately, but we can see usually the earliest signs of it with the earliest members of our genus. For example, if we look at a comparison between STS-5 and the specimen from Demonisi in the Republic of Georgia, D2700, we can begin seeing some of those changes. We can see expansion in the overall size of the brain. We can see a reduction, particularly in the premolars, the lack of molarization of these teeth. We can see this zygomatic, which is so anteriorly located in the Australopithecines, particularly the robust Australopithecines, move posteriorly. And associated with this is reduced facial prognathism, so a flatter face relative to the projecting faces we see in these Australopithecines. Looking at the dentition, again comparing Demonisi on the right with a specimen from, in this case, a robust Australopithecine from Swartkrantz on the left, we can again see the dramatic difference if we look not just at the size of the molars, but especially the premolars. The premolars from SK23 are very broad, very large, they're worn flat, and they are basically functioning as molars. The premolars from Demonisi show a reduction in overall size. They're not nearly as large as the M1 in this case. Although the M1 from this Demonisi specimen is still quite a large tooth, it's much larger than the premolars. Uh, and indeed, we don't see necessarily the same expansion in the molars as we see in SK23. Although the molars are big, in the case of D211, they actually decrease in size from M1 to M2 and from M2 to M3. This is a dramatic change. And if we look at the anterior dentition from the canines and incisors, we no longer see quite as much crowding as we've decreased, again, that prioritization of those post-canine teeth. So we don't have the same dental crowding that we see in SK23 here in Dimini C211. So overall, we have this dramatic transition seen in all aspects of our body. The transition from Australopithecus to Homo might be one of the most dramatic changes that occurs in our evolutionary past, perhaps as dramatic as the initial appearance of hominids some five to seven million years ago. That reorganization of the pelvis, which gave rise to bipedal locomotion, which set the stage for subsequent hominid evolution, might be matched by the increase in brain size, the encephalization and change in dietary ecology that we see in early Homo. Just as the origins of bipedality gave rise to a whole different kind of ape, the origin of increased brain size, perhaps taking the place of our dental structures in terms of our ability to get and process food, the increasing utilization of stone tools or modified aspects of the environment to process our food also gave rise to a whole series of events. It set the stage for Pleistocene evolution. It set the stage for everything that we're going to talk about for the remainder of the class. So this transition from Australopithecus to Homo is a fundamental and critical one in our evolutionary past.